Hey, hey, all you Arizona lovers. This is the Finding Arizona podcast. I'm your host, Jose. And I'm your producer, Brittany. And here at Finding Arizona podcast, we collect the local stories of all entrepreneurs and from around the valley. So join us at FindingArizonaPodcast.com where you can hear every episode and see it as well at... YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment below who you wanna see next on our show. And when you're ready to start your podcast, you found the right spot, Found House, your next podcast production company. Now, let's get back to the show. Score big with SeatGeek. Whether it's concerts, sports, or live events, SeatGeek has you covered. Use code FINDINGARIZONA to get a fantastic $20 discount on your SeatGeek tickets. Catch your favorite live events hassle-free with extra savings. Visit SeatGeek.com and make every experience unforgettable. Welcome back, everybody, to the Finding Arizona podcast. I'm your host, Jose. And as always, we're bringing fantastic guests every week. Yeah. I'd love to introduce you to Kat here. And she's actually coming to us with matchmaking, mm-hmm. uh, style for yeah. dating, and uh, love consultation, a dating consultation, a lot of everything. Yeah. And it's all encompassing of um, the Heart Agency. Am I saying that right? The Heart Agency and the Scottsdale Matchmaker. And the Scottsdale mm-hmm. Matchmaker. Yes. yes. Oh. And so I just want to say thank you again for joining us. Oh, and no, thank you, Jose. It's so I'd love to be here. Thank absolutely. you so much. Yeah. You have a very unique story that I heard a little bit about in a and yeah. another episode doing research a, a little bit on you. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait to share it first off. And then secondly, mm-hmm. I think what you have to provide today is just something that is one important to myself, love and important mm-hmm. to my wife, yeah. who is my producer. Also, it's just like relationships and how we go about them and how we how we do the thing that is our lives, but also kind of connect with others as well. So yeah. Let's get into it. The first thing I like to ask everyone who comes in through our doors is give us a little bit of your origin story and how this kind of career and business came into your life. That's, yeah. It's a story. Oh. I heard it. And I'm like, oh, there's so many things that I want to pull away from it. And I'm yeah, just like, I was going to say, how long is this episode? Yeah, no, no. We can um. go. We can go. So, yeah, it's um, this work is something that absolutely found me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I am a lover of people, always have been. Um, I have always been one of those people in which just naturally people gravitate towards, want to share their stories, want to, even like little children and babies, like my husband even makes fun of me that, you know, I'm always like attracting the babies and the, so it's, you know, growing up when you love people and they love you back, it's, you know, you see the goodness in everyone. You want to help, you want to um, assist them in any way. And I had always been a connector of sorts from, you know, from high school and college. I was, um, I was uh, the new member educator of my sorority. So as women come in, I would educate them. So I've always been a teacher and a leader of sorts. And also, have just loved being with people. Um, I am very extroverted, so I do recharge my batteries around (laughs) other people, which is really beneficial, but same. So I, um, so when I, uh, long story short, graduated from college and then I, um, got married very young and then found myself in my early thirties going through divorce, Mm -hmm. two small children, trying to figure things out. Um, you know, I always have this joke that when you become single, nobody like hands you a pamphlet of like, here's how to date and here's how to online date and here's how to connect with people. And so I had was, I threw myself into dating and in the trenches of it because I hadn't dated since college Mm -hmm. and, um, found myself, making lots of mistakes and yeah. bumbling over myself. And, you know, it's funny because when I look back on it, my passion for people was so strong that even when I was dating, I even sought that as an opportunity just to meet new people, yeah. just to learn about their stories. And I was always so inquisitive. And uh, in that whole journey of rediscovery and trying to figure out who I was, um, I went back to my roots and my roots, uh, I was a dancer. I was a dancer all through my childhood and wanted to start 
dancing again, I wanted to start bringing romance back into my life. Beautiful. Um, because when you're single, a lot of your friends are attached or married. Yeah. You feel isolated. You feel alone. But sometimes in those moments, really the best company that you can create is the one for yourself. Yeah. And I had to realize that, not yeah. seeking out answers within other people or happiness outside of myself yeah. that I realized that the happiness was really needed to start with me. And Absolutely. so going back to something that brings you joy and, uh, so wanted to start dancing again, couldn't find it. So I decided to open up my own dance studio for mm -hmm. women only. And it was a way of not only connecting and being around people and helping people, but also creating friendships and yeah. creating my own little community. And, um, when I, when I decided to put myself back out there, because I was single through all of this, I was working a corporate job, I was running my dance studio at night, and then I had two teenagers at home. Yeah. Luckily, they were such great kids. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have been able to do any of that. Um, I met, I decided to go online dating, and I met my now husband. Nice. And with him and I started dating, and the women of my studio yeah. saw me dating mm -hmm. and saw me falling in love and saw me going through this whole process. And more and more women were starting to approach me wanting help and assistance about finding themselves, loving themselves mm -hmm. because they saw me build something from the ground up. And they were like, I want to have that in my life, but not yeah. only that, but how do I find love and connection? Mm -hmm. And so I started coaching women. My husband, um, saw this, he, he watched the women and how they interacted with me. And he was like, there's something yeah. here yeah. that you're not doing, yeah. that you should be doing. <laughs> He's like, I think you really need to start coaching these women and helping them. And yeah. so, um, and that was one of the things that I, that I try to teach people about connection. I'm sure maybe you have this with your mm -hmm. wife too, is that you know, we want somebody to be our biggest cheerleaders, yeah. to support our passions, to support the things that we love. Not that they have to like be involved in those things, but to support us and yeah. to have a man that was like, oh, this is amazing. Like mm. you should do this for people. I was just like, who is this guy? <laughs> um, I was like, pinch me, what's going yeah. on? Um, so yeah, so I started coaching women and was taking them, um, started this coaching program, which developed into like one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then I was mm -hmm. doing these international retreats okay. while I was running my dance studio and then um, COVID. That's what, yeah. That's so <laughs> Wah, wah. Um, I yeah. mean, it, to me, like COVID was, um, you know, it was a time of definite change and transition. And so yeah. when you hold a public space where people are yeah. dancing and they're breathing and yeah. like, we didn't know what was going on and just, it's scary. It was scary. Yeah. And so, um, I was forced to close. Mm -hmm. And when I closed that kind of catapulted my coaching career and what ended up happening was, more and more single women were coming to me yeah, because they knew what I had. They knew what I could provide, but not only that, but they were, it was COVID. Yeah. Isolated alone. Like what else? So intriguing. What they were, they, they realized they're like, I want a relationship. Like this is something that I really would yeah. love to have. And I had one woman in particular who hired me, who said, I'm hiring you for one reason. And that is, I want what you have. Mm -hmm. Teach me. I want love. You have it. You <laughs> yeah. found it. Yeah. Teach it to me. So I started working with her and with the push of my business coach, because I was still trying to figure things out. It was so, it was still so new. mucky and yeah. new. And, um, you know, I already had been coaching for so long, but the, 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 the fear of niching down mm -hmm. was real where you're just like, Oh, I'm not coaching women on all things. I'm only going to coach them on this thing. Yes. So she's like, do that because I fell in love with it. It was so organic because mm -hmm. of all of my own dating history. I knew yeah. that I found somebody and I knew I could teach women the ways. Yeah. So I started dating coaching and then the world started opening up. And what happens is when you're a connector and you're a magnetizer and people are just <laughs> naturally drawn to you, you're out and about and people are like, Oh, you're a dating coach. Well, are you a matchmaker? And yeah. I'm like, no, Next conversation. Oh, you're a dating coach. Where are you a matchmaker? I'm like, no. It's the universe knocking yes. at your door. Like, yes. Let's, uh, let's, let's, hello. Right, <laughs> right. And so I'm like, 
wait a minute. And I remember talking to my husband. I'm like, is matchmaking a thing? Like, is <laughs> I don't know. Well, first off, did, was dating coaching a thing? And yeah. then that ended up being a thing because from the dating coaching, I started my podcast. Mm -hmm. And then, so I looked into matchmaking and it very much was a real thing. Yeah. I was like, holy cow, there's a whole culture, like a whole like supportive group called the Matchmakers Alliance. You can get your certification from the Global Love Institute. I was just like... My whole, like, it just, I, I like discovered the secret world. It was like, I cracked the code and I was like, because that was one of the things that's so scary is that, yeah. especially for where I was, you feel like you're on a desert island. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're a matchmaker, it's not like you can go have coffee with the other local matchmakers and talk about how, you know, how are things going for you this <laughs> yeah. week? It was really like, I felt isolated and alone. And I was trying to not be, feel that way because you know, COVID and trying to get out of there and just trying to be around people as much as I could. So, um, I got my certification and I announced the business and I just, so just forward. took off. Yeah. And yeah. So now That's here incredible. I am. Yeah. So there's a lot there. there. Yeah. And I, there I is. feel like your friend that did the podcast did a really great job of like getting you um, into the next stage, which was like talking about how you go about servicing your yeah. customers. But I'd like to pause really quick and kind of ask some um, questions and curiosities that I have about sure. that kind of time that yeah. you had there. One in particular is, you know, the reason why I ask about origins is because to me, one of the first things that I like to find out is how an individual gets to where they are because there's so many dynamic stories that people like to to tell us about how they've come to their certain profession or their certain career and I always kind of find it fascinating because you can you know for me it was a snowball effect mm -hmm. I found something that I was intrigued by and it's snowball effect Recently, we just did an episode with the lawyer. Well, not a lawyer. He's a business owner of a law firm, mm. but he got into it because of a tragedy. He was, his family was, um, his wife was in an accident mm. and they, you know, he wanted to help people who have been in accidents find the right kind of help to help mm. them in those kind of perilous moments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for you in particular, I find it intriguing that it is this evolution of, you know, a seedling of tragedy where, you know, you had your divorce and then you had to move forward. And one part that you brought up was like finding yourself again and mm -hmm. finding that passion for dancing and starting a studio. Mm -hmm. And then it evolved into something else. Yeah. And so that's why I, I'm so like interested in your story is because it, it has all of these twists and turns yeah. and where it goes. And it's so beautiful that you listen not only to yourself and to your support system, which is the ladies that were doing your dance studio and your, and your, I assume your boyfriend at the time yeah. going into being your fiance. Yeah. I, it was so beautiful because that's kind of the story of my, my wife and I mm -hmm. is that we, I particularly, you know, was like so nervous to tell her and start dating her. And mm. then it evolved into like she wanting to help me and, and what I'm doing. And then it evolved into like all these universal things of like telling us that we needed to be together. And that, you know, one of the things I like to say is like every time I wanted to take the next step, the universe kind of made that happen for us. Mm -hmm. And that was like our leases were up at the same time. So we moved in together. Our, you know, mm -hmm. we were tired of paying rent. So we started to find a house. The starting to find a house was like the stepping stones to, you know, engagement and, and doing all of those things. Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting time for ourselves, but it's also interesting in the fact that your story is a little bit similar it in is. the el evolution of life and evolution of career. Yeah. Um, I would like to ask, you know, when you let go of your one relationship and, and you know, you wanted to say, I got to find myself, was there any particular event conversation, maybe even with your own children of like, it's going to be okay. I need to move forward onto another thing or mm -hmm. another part of my life. Like, was there some kind of force that said yes. dancing, 
or I love this about myself or something like yes. that. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting that you mentioned my kids. So yeah. at the time that I decided to kind of take that route, my kids were 13 and 10. Okay. And, um, I ended up getting in a huge argument with my 13 year old mm -hmm. because I had become so hyper-focused in a way where, cause I was unhappy with my life. Mm -hmm. I was really unhappy with my job. I just got out of a relationship that was a bad relationship to begin with. And I was really lost. And so when you're, when you are just not happy within yourself, you project Mm -hmm. And you find something about something and you hone in on that and you vent about that. Like, even yeah. though that's not the problem, yeah. you're projecting because you're having all these, you're having all of this turmoil inside of you. And I was on my son about something and I don't even remember what it was. And he looked at me and he goes, mom, you seriously have to get a life <laughs> now. Normally, that's a horrible thing to say to a mother. Yes. I don't, by the way, for any listeners, any 13-year-olds that are listening, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not recommending that. <laughs> but it clicked in that moment. I was like, oh, my God. I don't have, he's right. I need something. I don't have a life. Like, all I had was my corporate job and home. And then I go out on the weekends with my single girlfriends because that's what you do when you're single. But I just, like, I was just like, he... I'm getting choked up. Sorry, you'll learn this no, about me. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Take your time. You know, as a single mom, you're just, um, there's something that's very special about your relationship with your kids. Absolutely. And my kids had been through a lot with my ex-husband and, you know, so I was really close to my children. Yeah. And so I felt that he could get away with that because he was very in tune to me and I knew that, you know, I knew that he was right. Yeah. And, um, it's that moment in which I was just like, I have to do something for myself or this is going to be my reality. Absolutely. And the only person that can do that, um, was me. Mm -hmm. And so, and I had gotten myself like out of the trenches of, I was, it was a, horrible, horrific divorce. And I felt like I leveled up enough. Right. So I yeah. got out of that divorce and I was, I got this, like, I saved my money. Um, I went from a trailer park into, um, you know, this brand new condo that I had worked so hard for. Yeah. And now once you get where they call it like the upper limit, right. So you get to this upper limit of comfort of discomfort. Well, then I became comfortable where I'm like, okay, well, what's the next thing? Now I got out of the trailer park and now I'm in this condo. My kids are thriving and succeeding. So what's next? And so sometimes when we're in those moments, we'll sabotage. And mm. that's what I was starting to do is sabotaging myself. Cause when you get to this upper limit, it's uncomfortable, yeah. but you have to push through it in yeah. order to get to the other side. And it's either you have one of two choices. You can either knock yourself back down mm -hmm. to where you're more comfortable. This is why lottery winners go into bankruptcy yeah. <laughs> because they get to that upper limit. And it's so like yeah. if your problem is that you don't have any money and, and all of a sudden you have all this money, yeah. it's so uncomfortable because now you can't sit there and complain that you don't have any money and you don't have the resources. Now you have all the resources. So people sabotage themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I had been working so hard to get this place. Now, now what? Yeah. You know, and so this was the next level. Like I had to take it to the next level. And the only person that could do that was myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was my 13 year old at wow. the time. How simple of a, con like how simple of a concept of like just a few words with your, essentially a mirror image of your younger self of like your younger, you know, right. teenage self or even, <laughs> even adolescent self. It's just like, you're right. Like I, yeah, it's just uh, one of those moments. And mm -hmm. I think there's so many beautiful moments that I share with my own son of like, mm. you know, I'm trying slowly finding my own childhood through him. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, you're such a smart kid. And he's like, thanks dad. Like, he's Aww. just like, I love you. And, um, Aww. but yeah, it's, it's definitely like, that was something that intrigued me because finding your way through difficulty mm -hmm. is definitely something I always, especially in the origin story part of, of, of your career, what we do here at the podcast. It's so intriguing to me because 
something I know will always click because that's how you got here. It's right. like, you know, and I was like, I want to know what that is. I want to, yeah. I want to uncover that. And so sometimes it's just a simple asking of like, what happened? And, that's and a great we'll, question. yeah. Um, so as you moved along into getting um, these, these women in the door and mm -hmm. getting your career started through the dancing, I was also kind of curious as to like, you know, your timeline with your significant other of mm -hmm. like, you know, how did he come into the situation? Because, you know, you are so busy. You're always, you know, right. you took the leap of doing the um, online dating and, mm -hmm. and finding him. What was his kind of, you know, career and things like that? And how did that kind of slowly, you know, change you or at least mm -hmm. involve you into his world and you mm -hmm. involving him into your world? And essentially the women seeing you be happier or right. be um, in love, like how that affected you on a grander scale. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, you know, uh, he was nothing I had ever experienced before. And yeah. it's because, you know, I say this all the time that if I would have seen his profile a year before, two years before, mm -hmm. I probably might have not even said yes, because I was in a space of sabotage, yeah. right? Where I was knocking myself down, saying yes to the wrong, op to the yeah. wrong men. Yeah. Um, but I had created this life for myself that I was super proud of. Yeah. And that I was in a space, I was proud of my kids. I was proud of, you know, this business that I had built from the ground up. Um, and so I knew that I had built this life that if someone looked in, they'd be like, oh, she's kind of cool. Yeah. Like, I think, she, you know, I'd want to spend some time with her. Yeah. So he came in, he, his profile was nothing like I had ever seen before. And my, you know, one of the things that I teach people is that it's not about chemistry. It's about curiosity. Mm -hmm very different. Yeah. So when you're curious about somebody, it just, it's, it gives a different energy. It's more playful. It's more, um, when you're curious about somebody, you're inquisitive, you're, yeah. you're just so interested in who they are. So you're asking them questions. And when you're asking people questions, then they feel seen. Yeah. And then when they feel seen, then there's emotions that start to build. Mm -hmm. And when I saw his profile, I was just like, this guy, is nothing like I've ever seen before. And I was just, again, I'm a people person. And I was like, I'm just so curious to know who he is. Yes. And, um, when he showed up to our date, um, he, so, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> say it, say it. so when I showed up, um, he had immediately when I walked in, he stood up. Oh, awesome. And That's I was different. like, Oh, not only do I have a curious profile, but now I have a gentleman. <laughs> what is going on? Um, so he stood up when I walked in because yeah. a lot of men don't do that. Mm -hmm. And he stood up and he um, gave me a hug and there was a water waiting for me. So not only that, but he said, I have somebody else that's coming. And so there was a water. And like mm -hmm. when you have been online dating and meeting so many different people and you have somebody that breaks a pattern like that, it's yeah. noticeable. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, this is something that's very different. Yeah. So, um, he sat down and we just immediately started a conversation. And, um, one of the things I used to do with my studio is that I used to put on these big, huge dance shows for the community. And nice. I was getting ready for this big dance show that was coming up. And, um, he, so what he does for a living is that he's a marketer. Okay. Nice. He tells stories. Yes. So he's a big we've, storyteller. We've met a couple. <laughs> yeah. So he, um, already knew about me, already knew about my studio. Oh, beautiful. And one of the, one of the things that I was encountering with men was that they were like, you're married to your job. You're too busy. Mm -hmm. You don't have time for me. And so that was like, you know, you're too much. Like I was constantly told by men, mm -hmm. I'm too extroverted. I'm too high energy. I'm too much. <laughs> I'm too this. I'm too that. And I remember yeah. thinking to myself, do I have to change for love? Like, this is crazy. Is it me? Like, like is it me? Yeah. yeah. And I, because you, when you hear that over and over again, you can't help it, especially me who, you know, I'm, I love people. I'm a people pleaser at times. And so I was just like, okay, what is, what do I need to do? And I'm yeah. very introspective, obviously. Yeah. So he was like, he told me on that date, he goes, if this doesn't work, what you're doing with this studio is beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
and I want to help you grow it as a marketer. Oh, that's awesome. So I was like, wait, you're just <laughs> going to help me just be if, if this date doesn't work. Yeah. So as we're talking, he puts this white box in the middle of the, t- in the middle of the table. Mm-hmm. Now the, he was against two of my rules. My first rule was I would never date anybody going through a divorce, which he was. Yes. And the second rule was I would never date anybody with small children. And he had a six year old. Yes. And I was like, cause at the time my kids were 15 and 12 mm-hmm. by this time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh man, he's breaking my two rules. <laughs> yeah. But I was so curious. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to give this a benefit of the doubt. So I'm getting to know him and there's this white box in the middle of the table and he's teasing me with it basically. And so by the end of the date, he goes, he wants me to open the white box and I open up the box and it's a hundred paper umbrellas. Hmm. And I take out, he takes out the paper umbrellas and he starts, cause we were in this like old seventies kind of diner mm-hmm. and he was sticking the paper umbrellas in like this, like, Cause the walls were quilted yeah. and he starts building like this. Cause he's an artist and he starts building like this art piece. And he goes, I'm leaving for the next week. I'm not going to be here for your show, mm-hmm. but I want you to take these paper umbrellas and I want you to put them in places that make you happy. Mm-hmm. And I want you to take pictures Aww. and send them to me. I was like, that's awesome. What? Yeah. So, I walked out of there stunned. I was just like, see, I even goosebumps. Like it's yeah. been 10 years. It's been 10 yes. years. Yeah, it's it's been 10 years. Um, and I think that that's like, and I, that's one of the things that I try to teach people is that when you love yourself, you can't, I mean, we're always a work in progress. There are still things about myself that I don't yeah. love. Yeah. But when you love yourself enough, when someone shows you appreciation, Mm -hmm. you can recognize it and not think of it as something different. Now, if I was really insecure, I could have been always love bombing me, always Mm -hmm. doing this, he's doing that. But no, he saw me and he, and I was his first date through his divorce. I was his first and last (laughs) first date. Thank goodness. (laughs) So yeah. So when he, and he just, was extremely romantic and like That's showed awesome. me that romance was not dead showed, but I had to see it mm-hmm. and let it in. Yeah. And so he was always like giving and being appreciative and showing up in the studio. And t- so his name's Brian and the women of the studio used to be like, we want a Brian. We want a Brian. How, how yeah. did you find Brian? Yeah. <laughs> we want a Brian. Where, where are they? We want to find him. And I used to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do that on your own time. I'm not, which is funny because now I'm like a matchmaker and it's yeah. like so funny. I help people try to find their Brian's like, honestly, like it's, yeah. yeah. So I think he's beautiful. been a huge part of the story. Yeah. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. Story. That's what yeah. I thought too. And it yeah. was like hearing you, you know, doing your research on someone, you, you start to pick out like some of those critical moments. And I'm like, that was that was one of those things of like your significant other made a huge impact on. Oh, and he on, still does. Yeah, and so for me, I'd like I, I can attest that like as from the man's perspective too. It's like you know when and this kind of goes back to like the fact that we were in our twenties and I was super intimidated by my wife and I, I was like he, she's got a full grown business and here I am. And I at the time had recently just moved out of an apartment and moved back in with my parents. And I was so like, she's she's not gonna wanna date me. She's not gonna wanna see mm-hmm. the person that I you know am and like not wanna deal with this child who's like moved back in, just you know, got his first real big boy job and you know, does this silly little podcast. And that was my inner thoughts. Yeah. And I just, you know, like you said, curiosity. Mm -hmm. I was very curious about her Mm -hmm. and I was very intrigued by, you know, how does she do her business? How does she, you know, meet these people? Like, what does she really do? Like, what are her interests? What are all these things? And I think she can attest to it's like, you know, when we were dating and first starting out, I would go to her office, we would have lunch, like, because I couldn't really work uh, a full on date outside of like the after hours, because she was so busy, and I was so busy. And so what I could do was 
have lunch with her and have spend lunch time with her. And so I would go to her office and we, I would bring her lunch or we would, you know, have lunch together and we'd just talk and, and I would look at her and she would be working some of the times. And I just, you know, we would have conversations and we just kind of built a rapport and relationship off of this curiosity of one another. Mm -hmm. And so when she found out about the podcast, she was even intrigued about that. And it all led to this kind of intertwining of like going out to the same events together. We went on a date that was like this kind of at the time it was like go and shoot each other like with photography and like going to that oh, and stuff like that i love and that so we you know we we were different and we were trying to find joy through these different events and curiosity of one another and i feel like through those moments we kind of built something special of like that curiosity kind of pushed us forward into our relationship because we of course, we had our difficulties. We've had moments of like, you know, struggle. And I think pushing past that is, and through communication and through, you know, vulnerability, yes. we were able to just say, okay, I am still in love or I'm still curious about this person. Yes. And I'm willing to forego a mistake or, you know, something of a trial because I care this much about this person and I am still wanting to be a part of their life. Yeah. And I think that for us was very much the same kind of ideals of like curiosity over chemistry yeah. was something that kind of pushed and propelled us a lot forward in our relationship. I also want to say it's like I tried my best to be as cutesy with her as possible <laughs> by doing little notes and stuff oh, like you that. Did. And Good. she 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 brought the same energy right back. Yeah. So it was like one time I got back to my car and there was like an energy drink and like a note and Aww. everything. She See, still, it's appreciation. Yeah. It's, it's, That's appreciation. Yeah. And yeah. it's still ongoing too. She's like she writes me notes when I sometimes Aww. when she makes my lunch still and yeah. it's like it's the it's it's appreciated for sure. And I also was like when we kind of moved into this new realm of like parenthood mm -hmm. and the ideas that we have about, you know, what we are capable of is so intriguing of like, we didn't think we'd have time to do this podcast nor time to keep dating each other, so right. sort to of speak. And we've actually made kind of really hard, you know, choices of like, for going one event to go on a date or to um, make an event that we are both invited to, to make that more about us and our relationship will like hide away and kind of do our own thing and talk to each other and, and kind of fall back in love with each other. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, those critical choices of like, you know, making sure that the appreciation is still and the curiosity is still ongoing. Yes. However hard it is, even when you have, you know, a child in his early ages, you, you try your best to make that still possible. Yeah. I think for, for at least for our relationship, it's, mm -hmm. it's really helped a lot. And um, I appreciate those dates. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So as I kind of continue forward and I like to make this more of a timeline thing. Yeah. So it's like you're now um, in this moment of growth and, and like you said, niching down. Yeah. And so that's definitely I like to also point out it's like the pandemic is there. And so it's hard enough to say I am a business owner of this and now I'm evolving into this next thing. But you have the overwhelming change of life for everyone. That's right. Um, and so I'd, I was kind of curious for you, as you kind of, do, you know, focused in on these, not only matchmaking, all these things, like, what were some of the things that you were looking inward at? Because I feel like with the pandemic, it was like that. It's like looking oh, inward mm -hmm. was really kind of the pivotal thing for a lot of business owners to keep them afloat because mm -hmm. they asked themselves, what am I providing to my clients? Or right. what am I providing to the community at large right. that I can like to say, I, I called it, what is your bread and butter to like help your clients so that you can focus in on that and mm -hmm. keep that afloat that 
allowed you to move past the pandemic and and now you know if you kept that hold strengthened and then it helped you kind of barrel through all of that mess and into the out outs, like you're saying getting more people and doing more outings at at the tail end of the pandemic and things like that mm-hmm. yeah it's so one of the i mean it was it's scary to go from it's scary to go to helping everyone to helping you know a smaller demographic yeah. of people with one particular problem yeah and my comfort zone was women mm-hmm. helping women yeah well there's more than just women yes. that are involved <laughs> yes. it takes two to tango <laughs> that's right that's right and um you know, it was one of those conversations I had to have with myself because if, if we are of service, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm a service based business, obviously. Um, um, and so my job is to listen yeah. and to lean in and, um, more and more people were coming to me being like, you know, men also need this help. Yes. Men also yes. need someone to be by their side. Men also. And I, this was like, um, really uncomfortable for me because I never coached men before. Yeah. I had never been in that realm before. And, yeah. you know, it was really comfortable just being a dating coach for women. But one of the things that I was, that was comfortable. But one of the things that I was frustrated with it was that I knew that I could get better results faster if I was to help men too. Oh, okay. That's a really good so insight. So I had a, a long conversation with my husband, mm-hmm. um, being like, "What do you think about this?" Because it's it is you have to when you open yourself up, it's 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 different where I, where you're having to help men. And so him and I would have several honest. Can you talk about communication? Yeah, having communication and also going, is this the thing? Mm-hmm. Like being a dating coach for just women, am I? using my talents and gifts to the best of their ability. Got it. And the answer was no. (laughs) So it was when the moment I decided to really lean in and Mm -hmm. really take ownership and because there's a lot of identity crisis that was going on with myself. Yeah. Yeah. During that period of time, you know, you go from um, having this very successful dance studio to the demise of public Mm -hmm. like divorce because you publicly announce that you're closing and you're like divorcing your business basically. And then having to go back into yourself and being like, when that's your whole identity Mm -hmm. and now it's gone, then you're having to reassess yourself being like, what do I do next? Yeah. And so have you ever taken the Clifton strengths finder? No, I haven't. Okay. But she might've actually. Have you ever taken the Clifton strengths? No. So I'm curious. I'm curious for the both of you. It does cost like $49 or something like that. But so during this whole figuring it out mm-hmm. for myself, I took the Clifton Strengths. And this Clifton Strengths basically, I think it's like 38 strengths, and it will say this is your top strength all the way to this is like your yeah. least. Not that you don't have strengths in all of these categories, but it just says these are your top three or these are your top five. Yeah. And so when I was in this, like trying to figure out because the the dating coaching for women was good, but I knew that, you know, I needed to do something more and different. And that's why, you know, and so I was like, so I took this Clifton strengths and my top three strengths is well, five, but my top three is woo. Now Mm -hmm. woo stands for winning others over. Obviously I knew that like, you know, again, standing in the grocery line and just having honest conversations with people. The second was empathy. Yeah. And the third was positivity. Awesome. So when it comes to giving people hope, Mm -hmm. you have to empathize with them and also be positive so that they can believe in it. Because the work that I do, you have to believe in it. If you don't believe love exists, I can't help you. You have to know that it's there. And then the fourth was communicator. Mm -hmm. And the fifth was relater. So I can relate to people. I can communicate with them well. I'm super positive. I'm empathetic. And I, I'm charismatic. I mean, that's all I like. I would say that's like the 
the job description for a matchmaker. Right? Like that would be the job description right. I would put for a matchmaker. So when I did this, it like really opened my eyes. I was like, okay. So, and you know, it's just when you feel that you have this calling or purpose or pull or signs from the universe or whatever, you don't want to answer it first. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew like, because it had been brought, you know, helping men, matchmaking had come to my attention several times. And I was yeah. like, forget it. Like, I can't, I'm, I was just like, I cannot do this. Yeah. But after I took that test and after having these com communication, you know, talking with my husband, we both realized that in order for me to use my, all of my ability and my talents to the best of, that I could, it was to really open up and allow men and allow matchmaking into the practice. That's awesome though. And it was so uncomfortable. <laughs> it's hard. Because matchmaking has a stigma, mm -hmm. right? You, yeah. you say it and people go, hmm? In fact, when I tell people I'm a matchmaker and they don't go, really? When they just go, oh, okay. I'm like, that's weird. Because <laughs> nobody ever goes, oh, okay. It's not like a profession you hear every day. Yeah. So matchmaking has a stigma. And part of that is that people have an idea of what they think it is. Mm, yeah. Not really what it is. And so when I opened it up and I started getting phone calls, kind of icky phone calls, honestly. Got it. I remember getting off the phone and going to my husband going, I can't do this. With like, them. I can't do this. Like with men and like, I can't. I'm not, I'm not, this isn't, this is really uncomfortable, but I knew I needed to push through because first off, you have to remind yourself, this is your own business. Mm -hmm. You're in charge. Yeah. I don't have to answer in anybody. And I don't, you know, it's my business. It's, you know, I, the people that I want to work with, I can say no to people I don't want to work with Yeah. and that's okay. Yeah. I can bless and release those people and they'll leave room for the people that are there and ready and ready. wanting yeah. to work with me. And so just kind of making that shift and mm. just recognizing that being like, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm a boss. Yeah. I got this. And the moment I did that, everything changed. So trying to find the right kind of clientele yes. was the, was the kind of, Oh, that's a huge part, which I think every business owner goes yeah. through that. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's definitely like, that's one of the difficulties of like any business is like, you'll have that kind of those struggle moments of like, you, you find, once you start diving in, you're like, where's the, like, cause you fall in love with the thing that you're passionate about. Yes. And then it's not until you meet the first real rock or, you know, iceberg. That, yeah. That that's a good like, way of putting it. Yeah. You're just like, Oh, you're do like, I oh really wait a minute. Keep doing this? Yeah. Yeah. And so definitely like finding the right kind of clientele is definitely, I can imagine for a matchmaker where it's like, where yep. people, like you said, people think it's one thing and it's really enough, you know, yep. not understanding the whole thing of it. But I, I find joy in just the fact that you have the one, the, the, understanding of who you are mm. as a not only a business owner but an individual that you want you, you find joy in keeping the momentum of the matchmaking mm -hmm. and of the love uh you know coaching and 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 stylizing as yes. well yeah um i think that's where i want to jump to next before yep. we kind of round out the, our end of our conversation is yeah. um the one thing i picked up from your conversation in the last or the previous podcast that you did was kind of this, and it, it, it what I understood it as, as um, e life response to effort. Mm. And you had a lot of passion in one, making a good first impression, mm -hmm. and two, um, putting effort into dating and yes. putting effort into love. Yes. And so I would like to kind of touch those two things. Yeah. One is, the f making a first impression. Yes. I don't know how my beautiful wife uh, <laughs> has withstand, because I've always Aww. felt like I'm really bad with style. And she, oh. as you, she is the style of fashionista to mm. me. And I always love being her photographer because I think she Aww. looks beautiful in every single photo that she takes mm. and everything that she puts any kind of effort into stylizing herself. But I'm like, I am the 
not the stylista. I am not the the fashion. And I was like, how do you find me attractive in just the pants and shirt that I put on every mm-hmm. day? But, you know, there are moments where I can clean up. I'll admit yeah. there are moments where I can clean up. Uh, but I just, again, I'm like, I don't know where it comes from. I think it's from my father who is very much the, he, I like to call him the jungle boy. He grew up in Puerto Rico. Okay. And so his his world has always been kind of the simplicity of life of sure. like whatever fits is is but then I I look back on my child I was like he does dress up. When he dresses up, he dresses I up. Bet. I so, bet. So um but it's like yeah, it's like the one thing that I took away from and it's just something that's always been in my head is like life responds to effort. And right. what you what you get is what you what you put in is what you get out of everything. That's right. So I'd love to understand why you're so passionate about a making a first impression mm-hmm. and b putting effort into your dating life. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because people are, you know, there's sayings of like, you know, um if you can't take me at my worst, then you don't, ex- you know, you don't yes. deserve me at my best. Um, you know, it's people have this misconception of how you present yourself has everything to do with everyone. Mm-hmm. And honestly, how you present yourself has everything to do with how you feel. And our outward presentation is a reflected, is, is a mirror of how we do feel about mm-hmm. ourselves. Yeah. And so in dating, Unfortunately, people are looking for reasons to say no. Yes. That was that was something that came up. Yeah. They're look automatically. I mean, there are so many videos that are like, these are the red flags to look for on a first date, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And it puts people on alert. And when someone shows up to a first date and they haven't put their best foot, you mm-hmm. know, best foot forward, and they show up in a way that makes them not, you know, that they haven't put forth any kind of effort at all. Mm -hmm. There's a few things that happen. First is the other person doesn't feel special at all. Yeah. They feel unseen, right? So if you're just scrubbing in from wherever you're at and the other person is a little bit more dressed up because they care about not only themselves, but, you know, again, wanting to make sure that the other person also feels cared for, meaning, I'm here to connect with you. I'm interested to get to know you. I'm here to connect with you. Mm-hmm. And I put forth some effort. It automatically helps people like put, you know, it's another, it's a no that you can put away, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, they show up like they care, which means they really want to be here mm-hmm. and they're really looking, yeah. you know, because when you show up like you don't care, people are automatically going to be like, well, they're not serious or, you know, obviously, or either that or women will say women more so than men. Women will say, wait, he doesn't take care of himself. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. Like people want, because your partner is a representation of also you, Mm -hmm. who your partner is. And if your partner, I mean, immediately, if the first impression is that they're not willing to kind of impress, then how is the relationship going to be? Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things too, where we can't connect on a much lower energy. Mm -hmm. Meaning if you would just roll in to a first date and not put any kind of excitement behind it, any kind of high energy, any kind of like hyping yourself up and you're trying to connect on a lower vibration, you just, there's a disconnect Yeah, and you can't connect on someone's flaws. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, it's called trauma bonding, so we're not going to get into that. (laughs) Right. That's a totally different thing. Totally separate. Totally separate. Yeah. I'm not a therapist. So, but if you, you know, when you connect with somebody in a much higher space, higher vibration, higher energy, Mm -hmm. and you start to get to know them, you're talking about the things that light you up. You're talking about the things that make you super happy. You're talking about your passions. You're talking about their passions. Like you're laughing on the date. You're just enjoying yourself because you're first off, you're both making a great first impression. So you're not focused on the clothing. Yeah. And Believe it or not, men just need to wear a nice t-shirt and jeans. Like it's not, it's really not a nice shirt. It's, it's not that That's hard. it. Like I'm not asking to show up in a full, like, you know, tuxedo. tuxedo yeah. Right. It just show up like you care. Yeah. Um, but as you get to know somebody, 
like you need to connect with them as their highest self Mm -hmm. because as the other things seem to seep in, like if everyone has stuff, we do, we all have stuff. We all have baggage, even though I hate to care. I even hate to say that because it makes it sound negative. Like all of your previous relationships and things that you've gone through have made you who you are today. And aren't you proud of who you are? I mean, yeah, I'm sure there are some things that you would change, but all of this threading of who you've become makes you who you are today. So why not be proud of it and show up? And when you show up in a very positive way, and as these like negatives seep in, since you've already started to build an emotional connection with somebody in a much higher space, Mm -hmm. then as these like negative things seep in, you go, oh, they're worth it. Oh, they're worth it. Oh, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. It's a compromise, not a no. It's like, no, I really like him because of all of these other things. Yeah. So it's okay, but you can't get to know all these other things mm-hmm. if you're connecting immediately on these negative things. Cause yeah. no one, you can't get past yeah. that. You yeah. just can't. Yeah. It's like going in for a job interview. When you go in for the job interview, you're going to tell them about why you were fired from your previous job. Mm-hmm. You're going to tell them why you don't get along with your coworkers. You're going to tell them. And of course your job, the yeah. person who's interviewing mm-hmm. is going to go, no, why would I want to hire you? Why would I want to hire you? Exactly. But no, you go in and you like, here are my credentials. Here's my experience. Here's my education. Mm-hmm. Here are my awards. Here's my community service. And then of course, as you like mess up at your new job, they're going to go, yeah, but look at this. He's totally worth it. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's not that you should treat your, it's not that you should treat your dates as a job interview, but it's the same concept. Like you show up to a job interview dressed like you care. Yeah. You don't show up in your pajamas and you're like, well, this is going to how I'm going to be working anyway. So why does it matter? Yeah. The person's going to be like, you obviously don't care. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. I can go on and on. No, no, no. You yeah. were fine. And that, yeah. That's why I was like, she's yeah. very passionate about yes. these things. And that's what because I wanted so to Because so many hear. missed opportunities. Yeah. There are so many, like people are already looking for reasons to say no. And if you're not willing to show up with intent, mm-hmm. you are missing out. And because people are burned out about dating, they're constantly telling me that the apps don't work. They're constantly telling me how frustrated they are, but yet they're not worth, they're not willing to put in just a little bit of extra effort. So it's not so exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're reaching the end here and I could talk to you so much. I know. We could talk so much more about things, but um, we like to lastly end our conversation with like goals and like highlighting something that you're very excited about the future for, for your business or for yourself. Yeah. Um, Please let people know that are listening. What are you most excited about for your business or for yourself? Oh my gosh. Well, I am. So I am really excited about, cause this business yeah. growing in Scottsdale and in the Phoenix area, that's really what I'm the most excited about. Yeah. It's, I have a ribbon cutting that's coming up hopefully in January. Congratulations. Um, and really kind of letting people know in this area that this type of matchmaking exists yeah. and that, um, you know, cause so many people are feeling so much more disconnected than ever. So that's, I'm getting more and more response. And so it just makes me incredibly happy. So I'm really Beautiful. excited to see where this goes. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Well, we like to leave you by letting everyone know where they can find you online. Yeah. Um, Social media, anything, everything underneath the sun, the yeah. floor is yours. Also, if there's an event or something besides the ribbon cutting you want to share, go right ahead. Yeah. So you can um, find me at scottsdalematchmaker.com. You can also find me on TikTok. I have a TikTok following at Cat Cantrell nice. and Instagram and Facebook. Um, you can also find my podcast, Dear Matchmaker, and all the streaming wherever you get your stuff. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Kat. Thank you. Absolutely. We yeah. do have an outro for our you can hear every episode of our podcast at findingarizonapodcast.com all social media under finding arizona podcast and last but not least we end every conversation with the kisses hugs and belly rubs to our four-legged friends and we will see you next time bye, bye.